Hi, I'm Dan. I welcome to your first garage. If you're new here, welcome. Returning, thanks for coming back. Today, I'm going to be talking about airbrush control. There's nothing more frustrating than getting your new airbrush home, loading it up with paint, and only getting frustrated to where you either want to quit, put it back in the box, or even take it back to the store. If this is a hobby or even maybe a business that you're interested in getting into, you really got to start with the fundamental basics. But there's two parts to control in your airbrush. One is going to be the setup. And I do have videos on setting up the airbrush, but I'm going to go over a little bit of that here today. And then once you get the proper setup, now you can start practicing the control. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. So if that's something you're interested in, please stick around. Don't forget to check out all my Amazon affiliate links down below for the products I use in this video and all my other videos. A thumbs up would be great. A couple of comments, good or bad, really helps out with the YouTube algorithm and helps this channel grow. Don't forget to check out my new store tab over on my channel. Got really cool airbrush merch over there. It's not just the Airbrush Garage merch, but a lot of really cool airbrush sayings that you can put on all kinds of products. So go check that out if you get a chance. It really helps support the channel. And with that, let's get started. So first of all, the airbrush. This is a gravity feed airbrush. They make siphon fit airbrushes. I don't particularly use siphon fit airbrushes. It's more for, you know, the t-shirt artist. I mean, and you could do the work that I do with the siphon fit airbrush as well, but I always had gravity fed airbrushes and that's what I got used to. And for the type of work I do, that's what works best for me. So the concept is the same and the control is the same, whether you have a gravity feed or a siphon fed airbrush. But a couple things you need to know is that first is gonna be the paint that you're using. Like I use Createx paints where illustration colors spray differently than the Wicked colors. One needs more reducing than the other. I can spray illustration colors right out of the bottle. Now, when I was first getting started, I couldn't do that. I still had to reduce it. And I still do reduce it about 10%. But when it comes to the Wicked Colors, the Wicked Colors is a thicker paint. So you have to recognize or understand and learn a little bit about your paint first. That's going to be really important in the basic control of your airbrush. Because if you're putting paint that's in your, your airbrush that's too thick, and I get this question all the time, Dan, I put the paint in my airbrush, I reduced it, I, it's, it's blotchy, it's spurting, it's spitting, it won't spray right. Well, when you're first getting started, that finger control or muscle memory control with your finger isn't developed yet. And I'm going to be talking about that a little bit here in a minute in the video. But as far as your paint goes, what you're going to want to do to start good control is, in my opinion, you're going to want to reduce your paint at least one to one, okay, or 50-50. At least that. I used to reduce it even more. And some of the tips I'm going to be sharing with you, I wasn't told and I really struggled through it when I first got started, especially with tip dry. Tip dry is going to be your number one frustration second to not getting paint to flow through your brush. Now, there's really not much to an airbrush. Now, I have uh, videos on, you know, the anatomy of an airbrush and stuff like that, but all you really have to understand is if you can get paint from this cup to flow from this cup through this little bit of the airbrush and out to the tip of the needle and you have free airflow, which air is never really the problem. I've never gotten my nozzle clogged. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but I've never gotten like restrictive airflow. My problem was always getting the paint to flow from the cup to the tip. As long as you can get paint to flow out to the tip of that needle and you have air, it's going to blow across that needle. It's going to blow the paint onto your substrate. Now, when you get tip dry, and we'll talk about that in a minute, that gets clogged up here at the tip of your needle and it doesn't allow the paint to flow onto the needle properly. So, first thing is when you're getting started, reduce the paint to 50, 50, or one to one, and try it there. If you're still having problems, reduce it even further. It's more important for you to get the paint to flow through the brush when you're starting so you can practice proper technique rather than fight with the airbrush of not getting paint to flow. So with that said, I have my Awada Eclipse here. It's a middle of the road brush. I've had it for about 20 years, love this brush. That's the other thing I'm gonna say and not to beat up on the really cheap, cheap airbrushes, but I would say if you're going to get into this hobby, start with at least something like an Awada Eclipse. Now, I do have a Neo. It's a $60 airbrush. And it's not a bad, you know, introduction airbrush if that is what your budget fits right now. But if you can afford it, 20 years ago, it was about $120. They run about $180 now. But it really is the baseline starting point for someone who, you know, thinks that they're going to be doing this long term. 
and you could always buy other brushes from there. As you always see here in my shop, I have a little bit of a problem. So with that said, what we're going to do is we're going to put some illustration black here in the brush and we're going to talk about how to control this airbrush. All right, so here we are. I got my illustration black loaded up here in my Awada Eclipse. I got a 50-50 mix right now. Now, what I like to do is once I put my paint and my reducer into the cup, now I know there's some people out there like to put the reducer in first. Some people like to put the paint in first. Me, it doesn't really matter. I don't believe it matters, and here's why. Because once I put it in my cup, I take it, I give it a mix with my mixing stick, and I get these at Hobby Lobby. I think they're wonderful. Make sure you have some paper towels around. You might as well just invest in quite a few rolls of paper towels. I use them all the time. I wipe my stick off. Now, that just mixed what was in the cup. So whatever, whatever you put in first, the paint or the reducer is going to be down here in the body of the airbrush. Okay. So what I like to do is I take my fingers and I give it a little bit of a backwash. And as you can see, it bubbled up there in the cup, if you can see that. And what that did is gave it like an internal mix. So now I feel pretty confident that that's mixed up fairly well or very well. So another thing you're going to need, you're going to need an, a place to give it a test shot because you don't want to give it a test shot on your substrate. All right, so what you can see here is I just have a paper towel taped to my bench, and as you can see, I use it as a spray out. You can tape anything you want there. I used to use a paper towel because it's nice and absorbative. You know, if you have a piece of paper, it's fine as well. But, you know, you can see how your airbrush is spraying and just do a little bit of spray out. I'm like, all right, I'm happy with that. If I'm not happy with it, then that's where I'm going to adjust my reducer or whatever it may be. But I give it a little bit of spray out. I'm happy with that and I'm ready to go. The other thing I forgot to mention was air pressure in your setup. Again, very key to control. I like to spray with 27 PSI for all my brushes and both the Wicked and the Illustration colors. For me, it doesn't really matter. I just set it at 27 PSI and leave it go. Been spraying at that pressure for years. Now, if you got a siphon fed brush, that's not going to be enough. Not my expertise, but I do know you're probably going to be in a vicinity of 40 to 50 PSI, depending on your needle size. Now that we've got the fundamentals of the setup, as far as the control goes, is you have to understand how your airbrush works. I don't deal with any single action airbrushes. Those are for makeup and cake as far as I'm concerned, you know, doing cakes. All my airbrushes, and if you want to do any kind of automotive work, uh, fine artwork, you're going to be using a dual action airbrush. So, assuming that's what you have in your hands right now, you're down for air and you're back for paint, okay? You want to keep the air on all the time until you want to stop painting. But here's the key. And what drove me nuts about tip dry was this. When you press down for air and you pull back for paint, you have to make sure that you pull all the way or push all the way forward to stop the paint before you let up off the trigger to stop the airflow. If you don't, there's going to be paint out here on your needle and you stop the airflow before it can blow it all off and therefore you're going to have tip dry. Now, even with the proper technique, are you going to get some tip dry? Yeah, it's just part of airbrushing, but it will be very minimal. And honestly, after 20 years, I get very little. And it's just because it took a long time, at least for me, to develop that proper technique. And so until I learned that, it really did create a lot of havoc with my airbrushing. Now, if you do get tip dry, there's two ways to deal with it. You can take and get your fingernails and get in there and try to pull the tip dry off. That works. Spend a couple needles that way. What I would rather do is get a little bit of reducer in a cup, dip a brush into it, come over, take the tip dry off. Works really well. Now, once you do that, you're going to want to give it a shot of air to blow off any of the reducer because if you don't, when you turn your project and the very first time you go to spray, it's going to blow the reducer onto your project. So as simple as it may sound, I've done it before and I know some of you guys out there have done it as well. So what I like to do is give it a shot of air and I like to take my paper towel and just dab it. This sounds like a lengthy process, but trust me, it's really not when I'm not explaining it. It goes very quick. And you're off and running again. So now let's get to painting some stuff and show you some of the control that you're going to need to get started. 
Now, when you're controlling the airbrush, you really have to get the feel and develop your own technique. But what you're going to want to do is look at what I'm going to tell you here today. Look at a few other videos or several other videos and see what their technique is. When you're airbrushing, you want to try to keep this airbrush at a 90 degree angle to this or perpendicular to the surface. Because what it's doing is, think about it, the air is blowing out around a needle. So it's really blowing a circular pattern, right? So if you're perpendicular and you press down for air and you pull back for paint, you're going to get a circular pattern. If you are up at an angle, you're going to get more of an oval pattern. See it? It's not a true circle. So in order to get your true circle, you want to try to maintain for the, you know, as much as you can perpendicular to 90 degrees to the surface. So next, once you understand it has to be at a 90 degree angle to your surface, you don't want to move your wrist when you're going back and forth with an airbrush. You want to move that airbrush because again, you wouldn't be at a 90 degree to the surface if you did that, right? So you want to make sure that you move your shoulders and your arms with the airbrush, okay? You don't want to be spraying like this with your wrist because you want that airbrush to be the same distance, okay, off your substrate all the way across. Now, I can vary distances, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute, but you still want to maintain that 90 degree angle. I'm going to paint a line showing you 90 degrees off and all the same distance. So I'm going to go down with air, and I'm going to come back with paint, and I'm going to start moving the airbrush. Now, I'm going to show you of varying what happens when you vary the distance from your substrate. So I'm going to maintain a 90 degree angle, down for air, back for paint. But I lifted the brush up as I was going, as you could see, the line gets wider, okay? Just as if I start wide or I'm about six inches off the surface, down for air, back with paint, and I'm going to come into the surface. As you can see what happens, it gets more narrow. So yes, you can vary as you are coming across your substrate, but it's important to maintain that 90 degree angle by moving with the airbrush, not moving your wrist like this. You don't want to get into that habit. So that is one of the number one control techniques that you got to learn with an airbrush. Before you start your dagger strokes, before you start your lines and your dots, you have to understand that the proper positioning with the airbrush is key. All right, so now once you think you got the feel for keeping the airbrush nice and perpendicular to your surface, and you're getting a little used to moving the airbrush, you know, different distances from your surface, you want to just start practicing some lines and some control on how much paint you have coming out of the airbrush, depending on whether you want a thick or a thin line. Of course, the more you pull back for the paint, the more paint is going to come out of the airbrush. So let's start with some heavy lines. So we're going to go down with the air. And we're going to pull back all the way with the paint. I'm going to be about three to four inches from my surface. I'm going to start my air first. And the other thing you really got to get used to is because you got to start that air first and you want to start moving the airbrush. And as you go, you want to stop the paint before you stop the airbrush. You want to keep the airbrush going. Now, what you're going to see me do here is you're going to see me start and stop the paint at the end of my lines, but you're never going to hear the air go off. So I'm down with air. I'm going to start the airbrush and then I'm going to pull back for paint. I'm about three inches from the surface. I'm going to pull all the way back with the paint. Ready? As you see, I kept going with the airbrush. So I'm gonna go back and forth here. Okay, so you just wanna maintain on off with your paint and airflow keep going. Now, once you got that down, now you can start trying to play around with the line thicknesses. 
right? So you want a fine line. So you're going to get a little bit closer to your surface. I'm going to come in about, you know, an inch, maybe inch and a half, two inches. And I'm going to go down with air and I'm going to start the paint, but I'm not going to pull all the way back. I'm just going to pull a little bit back with the paint. Now, as I get closer to the surface, I could also pick my speed up as well. Speed plays a control as well, because if I'm coming in fine here, but I'm not really moving all that fast, I'm going to get a different type of line than if I moved quickly, right? So if I want a really fine line, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to come close to my surface, and I'm going to just get the paint started. Okay. So again, you want to just practice getting the shoulders going, the arms going. Back and forth. And you would think, well, Dan, this is boring, but couple takeaways here. You're not seeing me get any tip dry. I'm able to keep the airbrush flowing. I'm getting, you know, a, a feel for the airbrush. And that's what you really got to do. And I'm talking about, you know, when you just bring this airbrush home, this is for you guys out there. You just brought the airbrush home and, you know, you think, like I said, you're just going to load it up with paint. That's not going to happen. If you can get an airbrush to flow and work in this way, now you can start better learning the proper techniques. And I do have an airbrush basics video. I'll pop it up here in a card. You go check that out. It goes over shading, lines, dots, dagger strokes. So I'm not going to do that here today. I wanted to do a video that actually goes in front of that particular video where, you know, I kind of missed giving the, the very raw basic techniques of making sure that airbrush is working properly so you can then practice with the basic technique video because the feedback I got from that video was mostly, well, you know, once I got my airbrush going, I really enjoyed the video, but I was having a lot of problems getting it going. So that's why I did this video for you guys. Well, all right, there you have it. Hopefully the takeaway for you guys and girls out there is that it really is a combination of two things, proper setup in order to be able to, you know, practice proper technique and basic control of your airbrush. You're never going to gain basic control of your airbrush if you're not set up properly or you don't understand how to get set up properly. So hopefully you got something from this video. If you did and you like my content on this channel, please consider subscribing. If you didn't check out the channel yet and this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, go check out the channel. Got over 120 videos on there to help you guys out. I really appreciate all the support. You guys know the drill. Click those links, hit that store tab, and we'll see you in the next video.